the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The epistle for the re uh, resumed sixth Sunday after Epiphany on November, Sunday, November 15th, is that of the Blessed Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, we give thanks to God for you all, making a remembrance of you in our prayers without ceasing, being mindful of the work of your faith and labor and charity and of the enduring of the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved of God, your election. For our gospel hath not been unto you in word only, but in power also, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much fullness, as you know what manner of men we have been among you, for your sakes. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in much tribulation, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were made a pattern to all that believe in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you was spread abroad the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, your faith, which is toward God, is gone forth, so that we need not to speak anything, for they themselves relate to us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who hath delivered us from the wrath to come. And the continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time Jesus spoke this parable to the multitudes. The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which is least indeed of all seeds. But when it is grown up, it is greater than all herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and dwell in the branches thereof. Another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like to leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, until the whole was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke in parables to the multitudes, and without parables he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. And thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. Jesus, who hath delivered us from the wrath to come. There is a wrath to come. At the end of all things, in this month of November, we focus on the four last things. We need to then consider the last, the second coming of our Lord and the last judgment. At the last judgment, the book will be opened and our sins will be read out. Our deeds will be read and everybody's going to hear them. Everybody is going to hear your sins and you're going to hear everybody else's sins. And you will be greatly humbled. It'll be greatly humbling. Now we think about uh, that illumination of your conscience when all of your, all of your sins are made, are recalled to you. As you recall your whole life, what a gift that will be. What a gift it'll be. And for the faithful, it'll be greatly humbling. We will feel the shame. We will be greatly humbled and we will be greatly thankful to God for His mercy and His love for us. And we will get through that. We will get through that. But you see, the wrath to come, we will be delivered from. Because the wrath is for those who cannot live through that. Those who have no faith. Those who have not thought of God. Those who sin without, without repenting will be so horrified by their sins that they will even either die of shame or if this happens before the second coming. You know, if this happens before the second coming, if people could really see all of their sins, 
they would they would despair and they would die. They would die of, of, of fear or they would kill themselves. Now, keeping in mind that, that suicide is damnation. It's it's damning yourself. And, and we can never we can never consider that suicide would be a way out. Suicide, that's not a way out. That's no easy way out. You're not going to have peace. You're not going to escape whatever tribulations and trials you're going through by committing suicide. We have to go through. We have to go through whatever it is we're given in life. Because if you kill yourself, you'll be in eternal agony and torment. So it's not an escape. But those who have no, who have no God, who, who have no repentance, that last judgment, that wrath to come will be horrific. Now those of us with faith, we'll get through that. It'll be hard. But we will know God's love for us. And we will be filled with such gratitude. And we will be lifted up. But although our Lord will deliver us from the wrath to come, Christians will not be exempt from the tribulation to come. We've had very mild tribulations. And really, if you think about it, we in America have become very spoiled. We've become very spoiled. Because the First World War was not fought on, on, our, on our territory. And the Second World War, there was only one mainland attack on the Oregon coast. And other than that, we did not see the Second World War in this land. We sent soldiers off. And the men who went off to war were traumatized and heroic because they didn't seek a life of comfort and luxury. In those days, there was little comfort and little luxury and people appreciated it when they had it. We have had it easy in our land. We've had prosperity, we have natural prosperity, and our, our political landscape has been just until recently. We've had it easy. And now we're experiencing trials and tribulations, but they're still mild. But they're increasing, and we don't know what to do about it. But previous generations, 100 years ago, well, 120 years ago, before the advent of the automobile, before airplanes, before automatic dishwashers and vacuum, electric vacuum cleaners, before cures for polio and before uh, antibiotics, before anesthesia. Think about what life was like. Your whole, the ladies, your whole day would have spent doing laundry. Your whole day would have spent doing laundry and hanging out the clothes to dry, wringing them out, and ironing them with a with an iron you heated on a on a on a stove. Your whole, that would have been one whole day of the week, and it would have taken you all day just to to make the meals on a on a wood burning stove. Men, you would spend months chopping wood and hope that it made it through the winter. Life was, was hard, and there was no time for stupid distractions that led you into sin. People didn't have time for all the things that we waste our time on today. People didn't have, people didn't have time for, for video games for hours upon it. People didn't have time for, you know, they might write a letter or two here and there. And certainly, that was a nice way of keeping in touch. But they certainly didn't spend hours on social media because they didn't have it, but they wouldn't have had time anyway. You think about the amount of time that we spend seeking comfort, seeking consolation, seeking entertainment, seeking distractions, and we don't enjoy it. 
We don't even enjoy it. And it exhausts us. And then we don't get the things done that should be getting done. Now God has blessed our land. He has blessed our lives. And what have we done in return? We've squandered it. We've just squandered it. And now there's a price to pay. Now there's a price to pay. We cannot make excuses for ourselves. We cannot make excuses for ourselves uh, that, um, you know, oh, well, I'm addicted to this, or I'm addicted to that, therefore I'm, I'm, not, I'm not guilty. You shouldn't even have time for that. Now, there have always been, there have always been those who shirked their responsibilities. There have always been those who tried to find ways around doing work. Some of those invented great things in order to do the work for them. But that's beside the point. We need to embrace the trials and tribulations that have come upon us and that may come upon us and thank God for them. We need to thank God for them because it is our opportunity to make good time we've squandered, it's our opportunity to make reparation as a Catholic people, as the church, for the sake of the world. And, and that is how we live out that, what we call the common priesthood. The Catholic people need to suffer along with everyone else. And we've, we may try to find ways around that, but sooner or later, it will come to us. And we just need to be okay with that. It's okay. It's just okay. We're not abandoned. God has not forgotten about us. This is part of His plan. And it is the only way in history, and we've seen it time and time again, when man turns against God, and now we see that on a global scale. Man has turned against God, even those within the church. The only way that God brings about conversion is by suffering. People suffer, and they turn back to God. And they're not hypocrites for doing it. That is the way God brings us back. So we can't start saying, oh, I'd be a hypocrite if I turn back to God now. No, you need to turn back to God now. That's why God is allowing you to suffer. That's why God is bringing these trials upon the earth, in order to turn man back to God. We've had it so easy. We're like spoiled brats. We're like spoiled brats, really. And we need to grow up. We need to become adults. You know, there was a time, 100, 100, in World War I, you had 15-year-old boys entering the military. They wouldn't go necessarily see combat, but they would, you know, they'd be the assistant to, you know, one of the officers, carrying his stuff, running errands for him. You had 15-year-old you had boys as heads of families when, the, when their fathers died and they had to grow up pretty fast. And, and young, young girls often got married at young ages because mortality rate was much younger and you had to get started in life. Sometimes families needed to send one of the older children off to work, just help support the family. That's just the way it was. We need to think about how easy we have it and not get discouraged get discouraged. We can do this. God is giving us everything we need to do this. God has poured out his gifts upon you. And you need to draw on those reserves of grace and talent and industriousness and kindness and temperance need to stop wasting your time on things 
that lead you into sin. Draw upon those reserves. You have so much that God has given you. And the world could be such a beautiful and holy place if everyone would do that. So it needs to start with us. It needs to start with us. We need to draw upon all those wonderful and beautiful things that God has given us and allow them to shine out for all the world to see. And they may kill you for that. But what a glorious death! peace of soul you will have. Or you may just see people start to change. That's already happening. People are changing. People are repenting. People are coming to the church. And I guess that's about all I have to say today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.